This week on Hawkeye Sports Report, the wrestling team sweeps the Iowa City duels. Next into Carver, the arch rivals from Ames. The men's basketball team has been down south and out east. They will be happy to return home. And the women's basketball team pulls a big upset, and it comes at the free throw line. That and much more on Hawkeye Sports Report. Hello and welcome to Hawkeye Sports Report. I'm Matt Nelson. The Iowa wrestling team was busy Saturday as it hosted the Iowa City Duels at Carver Hawkeye Arena. Iowa improved to 5-0 on the season with wins over Southern Illinois, the Edwardsville variety, and Cornell College. Iowa swept all 10 matches against the Cougars and won 9 of 10 against the Rams. The Hawkeyes pinned three in the SIU Edwardsville match and six in the win against Cornell. Iowa also defeated Iowa Central in an exhibition match Saturday. Ah, but that's the past, and there was little doubt at Tuesday's media availability that the fourth-ranked Hawkeye wrestlers are focused squarely on that team from Ames that comes to Iowa City Saturday. Recent results um, show that they're not happy, I know, and we can't look past them because of those results. Those results tend to boost competitors and their competitors, and this is a big intrastate match. And regardless of where the rankings are or head-to-head -head matchups, we got to be ready. They lost to Old Dominion last week. How does that kind of affect sort of the rivalry or, or the duo this weekend? Um, I don't know if it's going to affect the fans that they bring traveling with them. Um, they might not travel as well. Uh, for them, we need to be even more aware because they're going to want to come in here even harder to redeem themselves from their losses last week. So there's no way to, to overlook uh, a team like Iowa State, even given the loss and, and the rivalry is not exactly where it was, say, a few years ago? Uh, no, you can't overlook anyone. I mean, it's another opportunity, another chance for us to get on the mat and compete, but also to get our routine down and get, get ready and prepare for when we do have the, the Oklahoma State, the Penn State, the national finals. Um, so it's really something you can't overlook, but you got to prepare just the same. That is absolutely a something that needs to be worked on. I mean, we're number four ranked or whatever, and and uh, they're out of the top 25, and I think that does impact. Uh, you don't have the number one team in America, nor do you have uh, two high-ranked opponents that where you know maybe from the outside looking in, the experts maybe don't see it as a top-billed event. But we don't look at it that way, and regardless of who your opponent is, regardless of you know what it looks like on paper or rankings, et cetera, we have to get ready to wrestle. Iowa State is not ranked in the top 25 after losing to the Monarchs of Old Dominion Sunday. The Hawks and Clones get things going Saturday at 7.30. When we come back, the focus turns to basketball. But first, it's time for this week's Hawkeye Sports Report Player of the Week. The Iowa women's basketball team pulled an upset over 12th-ranked West Virginia Sunday, and Jamie Printy was lights out at the free throw line. The senior hit all 17 of her free throw attempts. She is just the third player in Big Ten history to go 17 for 17 from the charity stripe. Jamie Printy, the Hawkeye Sports Report Player of the Week. After months of anticipation, the fuel inside us rises. All of our training and devotion has prepared us for this. We stand as one team in black and gold. This is Iowa Wrestling. Secure your season tickets today. Call 1-800-IA-HAWKS or visit HawkeyeSports.com. Welcome back to Hawkeye Sports Report. The men's basketball team has been on the road lately. The Hawks split a pair of contests in Cancun prior to Thanksgiving and then traveled to Blacksburg, Virginia for the ACC Big Ten Challenge. A 16-2 run in the second half cut Iowa's deficit against the Hokies of Virginia Tech to just three points. Aaron White led the way for Iowa with a double-double, 21 points and 10 rebounds, but in the end it was not nearly enough as Iowa fell to 5-2 on the season with a 95-79 loss. Like the full of shooters, so a lot of us are hesitant to help, and um, 
since they weren't shooting the three as well as they normally do, they were driving a lot more than what we noticed on film. So, you know, we just we didn't make the adjustments throughout the game. We learned we're going to be tough the whole game. We, we weren't. Um, you know, we, we can't live off stretches. We got to play play full games. Um, we got work to do. We're gonna, you know, we're gonna get that taken care of. But um, I think the whole team learned. I just wanted to come out and give my team a boost once again. Um, every time I come in the game, I just wanna, you know, contribute, give us a boost off the bench. You know, coming out, come out with energy, come out attacking. New experience, obviously, for our five freshmen. Um, you know, for me, you know, we had tests like this last year. You know, the Big Ten, you, know, you get crowds like that. Um, it's real disappointing, you know, where we fought all game, never really took control of the game like we should have, um, kind of didn't follow our game plan like we should have. Um, you know, but I guess it's a learning experience for all of us, and, you know, we'll just have to get back to work. And, you know, we got, I think, three home games here. Um, you know, just trying to string, string some wins together. The Iowa women's basketball team is riding a two-game Florida winning streak. In Miami Sunday, Iowa knocked off number 12 West Virginia 79-70. Bluter's bunch trailed by seven at halftime, but battled back mostly at the free throw line. On the afternoon, Iowa made, get this, 42 of 50 free throw attempts. That momentum did not continue north to Tallahassee. Iowa dropped its game in the ACC Big Ten Challenge to Florida State Wednesday. The women's basketball team returns home Saturday afternoon. Back with football and volleyball season recaps after this. The Iowa men's basketball team returns eight lettermen, including three starters, from a team that made its first postseason appearance in six years last season. The Hawkeyes now welcome in a nationally ranked recruiting class of five talented freshmen. The Hawks are on the rise. Order your season or single game tickets today. Call 1-800-IA-HAWKS or visit HawkeyeSports.com. Welcome back to Hawkeye Sports Report. The Iowa volleyball team concluded its regular season Saturday at home against the defending national runner-up, Illinois. The Hawkeyes said goodbye to one senior, Allison Strauman. Illinois defeated Iowa three games to none, 26-24, 25-18, and 25-21. Iowa finishes the season 10-23, 2-18 in the Big Ten. Seven Big Ten volleyball teams reached the NCAA tournament this year, a very tough conference, the Big Ten. Friday, the Iowa football team wrapped up its season with the annual Hy-Vee Heroes game against the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Iowa fought hard against the Huskers, but it wasn't enough as Nebraska headed off to the Big Ten championship game following a 13-7 win. Wednesday, head coach Kirk Ferentz met with the media to look back on 2012 and to look ahead to 2013 following a 4-8 season. First of all, I just want to congratulate the award winners on the team. Uh, Big Ten team came out on, on Monday or Tuesday, whenever that was, I think Monday. Uh, and certainly of, of note, Micah Hyde not only being first team, but winning the uh, Tatum Woodson Defensive Back of the Year Award and uh, you know following up on Marvin's award last year. That's really a prestigious thing and nice, nice highlight to a very good career. You know, a guy played four years, did a great job in a lot of phases and uh, you know, was a really valuable team member. So that's really nice recognition. And uh, you know, he being a first team guy, James Ferentz being second team, CJ, Anthony Hitchens, Mike Meyer, Matt Tobin, Joe Gaglione and uh, James Morris all getting honorable mention in James Vandenberger Sportsmanship Award. So, you know, that's certainly uh, uh, nice honors for all those guys. Now, just uh, looking back real quickly, and I'll field questions, but, uh, you know, unlike trying to put a spin on a whatever it is, $15 trillion deficit, I'm, I'm not going to go down that road. Uh, you know, bottom line is this was a disappointing uh, season in terms of record and the fact that we're not playing in a bowl game. Uh, there, there really isn't a way to put a positive spin on that. And, uh, you know, it is kind of what it is. So uh, things happen in college football. They happen in the NFL, and they happen in high school football. And, uh, you know, certainly we're not pleased about being home, but that, that's the way it shook out. Uh, and I think, you know, if you just look at the big picture a little bit, over 12 years right now, I think we're second in the conference uh, in terms of being, you know, 500-plus or better seasons overall, uh, be it overall records or Big Ten records. Uh, we have gone to 10 bowls. We've been nationally ranked five times to four in the top ten. And, you know, all that. So those, those are positives, certainly. But, uh, you know, that, that being said, 500 is certainly not our goal. And uh, that's not what we're shooting for in any season. Uh, you know, really, if you break it down at the eight losses, which is really where our focus is right now, you know, you had two games where uh, we were no, never really competitive, and that's disappointing. We had six games that we lost by an average of four and a half points. Uh, you know, and there were things that go involved in that uh, that, you know, lead to that. But 
Uh, we're really not in the excuse business. So, you know, what we're going to try to do is move forward here and see that uh, if we can't do things a little bit better. And if there's any, any solace in this, you know, you go back to 06. I referenced that on Saturday or Friday, excuse me. Uh, you know, we were 2-6 and six, uh, in the Big Ten that year. Uh, we lost six conference games in a row, and that, that was not much fun. We did have a chance to play in a bowl and at least, you know, start moving forward a little bit. In 07, we didn't go to a bowl and uh, followed up with two of our best seasons, our most enjoyable seasons ever, uh, 08 and 09. So, uh, you know, I don't look at this as a, an impossible task by any stretch. And, uh, you know, right now our focus is on improving and finding solutions to what, uh, you know, uh, what might have taken, taken place. And if there's a blessing in all this, you know, we got a little bit more time than we would have in a normal situation. So it's an opportunity for us to work a little bit more thoroughly and, and uh, uh, hopefully do a better job uh, moving forward and that's uh, really what we're what we're focused on right now so that's kind of where we're at right now we've got a lot of work ahead of us and uh, that's already begun and it will continue as we move move on I am optimistic and always have been I was optimistic 14 years ago so the way I look at it, I've got a great job I work with great people in, in a great place and uh, you know, I, I saw no reason 14 years ago why we couldn't be successful I see no reason today why we can't be successful moving forward, and it's, it's about as simple as that. So, uh, you know, what it comes down to is what, what we do here, and, uh, you know, the worst thing you can do is panic. Uh, the next probably worst thing you can do is, is be, you know, have blinders on, and I don't think we're going to do either. You know, I really don't. So you ask the hard questions, you, you know, you take the hard looks at things and uh, have hard conversations if necessary, and then then you get to work, you know, and you, you, you get things going in the right direction, and uh, it's really no different than, than what we tried to do after any season. And, uh, you know, we, we've, if there's any good thing, I guess we've had experience at it. You know, like I said, the 06, 07 reference. So, but the other part of that equation, it's, it's, it's not automatic that, you know, we're just going to pop up and have a couple great years. I mean, we, we got to get the, we got to get the work done. And that's, you know, that's kind of where the rubber meets the road. Carver Hawkeye Arena will be a very busy place Saturday, and it's not the only UI venue hosting competition this weekend. A look ahead at the weekend is just ahead on Hawkeye Sports Report. But first, the Hawkeye Sports Report play of the week. Let's head back to the mat. This is third-ranked junior Tony Ramos at 133 pounds against Patrick Myers of Southern Illinois Edwardsville. Four minutes and 24 seconds into it, the flip. And it is over in a hurry. Ramos with the pin as part of Iowa's domination at the Iowa City Duels. This week's Hawkeye Sports Report Play of the Week. We fight, fight, fight every day in the gym. We're going to fight, fight, fight every game on the court. Will you fight, fight, fight with us in Carver this season? Hawkeye Women's Basketball. Get your season tickets now. Call 1-800-IA-HAWKS or visit HawkeyeSports.com. Welcome back. We're just about to wrap up this week's Hawkeye Sports Report. But first, here's what's ahead on the Hawkeye calendar this week on Iowa. The swimming and diving starts early in the day Friday at the Campus Recreation and Wellness Center on the east side of campus. The Iowa women host six other schools, including 22nd-ranked Michigan. The men host four teams, including 19th-ranked Notre Dame. Swimming and diving begins at 10 a.m. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday with prelims. Finals follow at 6 p.m. on Friday, Saturday, and 4 p.m. on Sunday. Admission is free. The action in Carver Hawkeye Arena Saturday starts at noon as the men's basketball team hosts the Islanders of Texas A&M Corpus Christi. The Coyotes of South Dakota come howling Tuesday at 7 p.m. as well. The second game of the basketball doubleheader Saturday is the Iowa women hosting in-state foe Northern Iowa at 2.30. The women are off then until next Thursday when Iowa State comes to town. And speaking of Iowa State, as highlighted earlier, the Cyclone Wrestling Team comes into town Saturday night at 7.30 to battle Iowa. Two intra-squad events this weekend in Iowa City as well. The track team hosts its black and gold meet at 2 on Saturday at the Rec Building, and the gymnastics teams do the same, too, on Sunday at the Fieldhouse. Finally, one alumni note as we wrap up Hawkeye's sports report. Mark Stoops played defensive back for Iowa in the mid-1980s. He is the younger brother of Bob Stoops and Mike Stoops. Mark was named the head football coach at Kentucky this week. Previously, he was the defensive coordinator at Florida State. Mark Stoops, Florida State's defensive coordinator, has agreed to become the next head coach at Kentucky. This according to ESPN.com. 
Your thoughts? Wow, that's breaking news. Uh, my, my thoughts, just initially hearing that, uh, Mark Stoops to me is, is one of the assistant coaches who's kind of been elevating his game as a defensive coordinator. I think when he left Tucson, where his brother Mike was the head coach, to go to Tallahassee to join the Jimbo Fisher staff, I knew there was a big opportunity for him to, to showcase his leadership skills and the fact that he's ready to become a head coach. If, in fact, he's taken this opportunity, uh, he gets into the SEC. It's a tough job, uh, but I, I tell you what, he's got great pedigree with being a Stoops brother, and the fact that he's worked with some outstanding head coaches helps his cause. I think he's ready to go, and, and uh, if they end up selecting him, I, I think that'd be a great choice. I'm Matt Nelson. Thanks for watching Hawkeye Sports Report.